Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 16th of October. Three terrorists killed in an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. NATO says Taliban must commit to lasting peace in Afghanistan. And Gotabaya refutes to recognize UN deal over probe into Sri Lanka's war crimes. And now for all the details. Security forces gunned down three terrorists in an encounter in Anantanag district of India's northern Jammu in Kashmir on Wednesday. The gunfight broke as a cordon and search operation was underway in a village following inputs of presence of a group of terrorists. Three terrorists were killed on Wednesday in an encounter with security forces in Anantag district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. The encounter broke after security forces raided a village in Anantnag following intelligence inputs about the presence of terrorists in the area. During the cordon and search operation, the hiding terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba fired on the search party. The fire was retaliated leading to the gunfight. This was the first such incident since mobile telephones were restored on Monday in India's Jammu and Kashmir after Indian government imposed a communications clampdown following revoking of the special status of the region in August. India has long accused Pakistan of arming and infiltrating terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. Preparations are in full swing in India for the inauguration of cross-border Kartarpur Pilgrim Corridor with Pakistan. Officials, after inspecting the under-construction project, said on Wednesday that about 70 to 75 percent of the work has been completed and the corridor will be ready prior to the deadline. Preparations are in full swing in India ahead of the inauguration of cross-border Kartarpur Pilgrim Corridor which will connect Sikh holy sites of Dera Baba Nanak Shrine in India to Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan. Officials on Wednesday inspected the progress at the construction site of the corridor in India's northern Gurdaspur district. They said 70 to 75 percent of the work has been completed and the corridor will be handed over to the government prior to the October 31st deadline. The Kartarpur Corridor will be inaugurated on November 8 by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in time for one of the religion's most sacred festivals, the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism on November 12th. Look, the progress of the whole structure is about 70-75% of the progress. The roof is the only roof that is on the top. It is the only one that is on the top. And the work ये काम बहुत तेजी से चल रहा है इस बात का आप हमारा विश्वास माने मैं इस वेले करदार पर लांगा इसे बांध रहा हूँ इसे खड़ा है यहाँ मैं इस वेले सारी यह सरकार ना भी तो अनुभव कर जाया और सारे सेक्स जिनार दासां की तियां उन जिनार दासां पूरी हैं जिन्होंने इस अनुभव कर दिया इस वेले पूरा Sikh community across India has long sought easier access to Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in a village just over the border in Muslim-majority Pakistan. The temple marks the site where Guru Nanak died in the year 1539. The corridor will facilitate visa-free movement of Indian Sikh pilgrims who will have to just obtain a permit to visit the holy site. Moving on, Britain's Prince William and his wife Kate on Tuesday met Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan, who the prince played cricket with in London as a child. The royal couple are on a five-day visit to Pakistan that will focus on boosting ties and addressing challenges such as climate change.
Britain's Prince William and his wife Kate on Tuesday met Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan, a former international cricket star who the Prince played cricket with in London as a child. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge met Khan at his residence in Islamabad on the second day of their five-day visit to Pakistan. The visit will focus on boosting ties and addressing challenges such as climate change. Prince William's mother, Princess Diana, a hugely popular figure in Pakistan, visited the country several times in the 1990s and helped Khan raise money for a cancer hospital. The royal couple later arrived by tuk-tuk for a reception held by the British High Commission at a Pakistani national monument. In a speech, Prince William said the United Kingdom and Pakistan share unique bonds, adding that 1.5 million people living in the UK had Pakistani heritage and the UK was one of Pakistan's top investors. I'd like to begin by saying bohut shukriya to you all for making us so welcome in your country. Stood here with this magnificent monument behind me, I am struck by the great strides Pakistan has made since its birth 72 years ago. The view from this hill would have been quite different when my grandmother, the Queen, first visited over half a century ago. Looking out, one would have seen the beginnings of a city under construction, yet to become the great capital that it is today. The couple arrived in Pakistan on Monday and are the first members of the British royal family to visit the country in more than a decade. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has said that the alliance welcomes the resumption of U.S.-Taliban peace talks on the condition that Taliban shows a willingness to make real compromises at the negotiating table. He said NATO remains committed to Afghanistan and to ensure the country never again becomes a safe haven for terrorists. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has said the alliance welcomes the resumption of peace talks between the US and the Taliban on the condition that the Taliban shows a willingness to make real compromises at the negotiating table. Speaking at the NATO Parliamentary Assembly plenary session in London earlier this week, Stoltenberg said, at the moment Taliban is escalating violence and not ending it, which demonstrates a lack of commitment to lasting peace in Afghanistan. The NATO chief asserted the attacks by the Taliban proved the need for firm and credible guarantees for any future peace deal. We would um, welcome the resumption of these peace talks, but then Taliban must show willingness to make real compromises at the negotiating table. Unfortunately, what we see now uh, is that Taliban is escalating violence, not ending it. This demonstrates uh, a lack of commitment to lasting peace, and it proves the need for firm and credible guarantees uh, for any, uh, any future peace deal. Months of U.S. negotiations with the Taliban ended after U.S. President Donald Trump abruptly cancelled talks with the group that were planned for September 8 over the killing of a U.S. soldier in a terror attack in Kabul. The meeting was aimed at securing an agreement to pull U.S. troops out of America's longest war of 18 years. In news from Nepal, former Speaker of Nepal Parliament Krishna Bahadur Mahara has been remanded with additional three days custody over allegedly attempting to rape a woman's staff in the Secretariat. Nepal police had taken Mahara into custody on October 6. A district court in Nepal has ordered additional three days of remand for former parliament speaker Krishna Bahadur Mahara, accused of attempt to rape charges. According to the court's decision on Tuesday, Mahara has been remanded into judicial custody for 13 days from the day of his arrest on October 6. Mahara was unable to furnish his statement in the court due to health problems and had been admitted to hospital after complaining of respiratory-related ailments on October 10. The former parliament speaker was arrested by Nepal police on October 6 after a female staff at the secretariat accused him of rape. He had stepped down from his post as a speaker on October 1st after mounted pressure from his Nepal Communist Party as well as the public. He has, however, refuted the allegations. 
In his first media interaction after being declared presidential candidate of SLPP party for the poll next month, Gotabaya Rajabaksa has said that if he wins, he won't recognize the government's agreement with the UN to investigate alleged war crimes during the nation's civil war. Sri Lanka's presidential frontrunner Gotabaya Rajpaksa on Tuesday said that if he wins, he won't recognize the government's agreement with the UN Human Rights Council to investigate alleged war crimes during the nation's civil war. Gotabaya made this statement in his first media interaction since being declared candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna or SLPP for the November 16 presidential election. In his first campaign rally last week, Gotabaya said he would release members of the armed forces held falsely charged with killings and abductions. Gotabaya was the top defense official during the last few years of the long civil war, which ended in 2009, serving under his brother, then President Mahinda Rajpaksa. Under their watch, Sri Lankan forces were accused of targeting hospitals and killing civilians. According to UN reports, some 40,000 civilians may have been killed in the final months of the 26-year civil war in the island nation. Bangladesh's first ever three-day digital device and innovation expo kicked off on Monday in capital Dhaka. The expo aimed to create commercial scopes for local innovations in the digital industry. Bangladesh's first ever Digital Device and Innovation Expo 2019 began on Monday in capital Dhaka, aiming to create commercial scopes for local innovations in the digital industry. The three-day expo was categorized in eight different zones, focusing on innovation, startup and robotics. Several local digital device manufacturers showcased their products in the exhibition Drawing Visitors. The innovation zone managed by the government showcased the changing scenario of Bangladesh in the field of agriculture, Bangla language tools, disability-related devices, education and health. The expo also had Mars registration zone as the government plans to launch its Mars project by 2041. An army recruitment drive in India's Jammu and Kashmir witnessed an overwhelming response with over 6,000 youths taking part. An official said that as many as 550 of them were shortlisted for an infantry battalion of the Territorial Army. A recruitment drive for the Territorial Army in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir received an overwhelming response with around 6,500 youths participating in it. The four-day drive was organized to shortlist young candidates for the 162 Infantry Battalion Territorial Army, Jack Lai. The participants also came from some of the remote areas of Kashmir Valley to participate in the drive. An official said that as many as 550 of them had been shortlisted. So far we have seen very overwhelming response and close to 6,500 uh, youth have already appeared for the screening in physicals. Out of that, uh, we have shortlisted as of now approximately 550 and thereafter they will go for a written examination and overall their merit will be prepared and they will be inducted into 162 Territorial Army. Our village is a lot of poverty, so if this will happen मैं अपने दोस्त को जरूर बताऊंगा कि यहां भर्ती है तो वाकई ये सच में अच्छी चीज है भर्ती इंशाल्लाह मुझे बहुत शौक था इस इसमें जाने का शुक्र अल्लाह ताला का मैं इसमें क्वालीफाई हुआ द कैंडिडेट्स एक्सप्रेस देयर एंथुसियाज्म फॉर सर्विंग द नेशन बाय जॉइनिंग द आर्मी दे सेड सच ड्राइव्स हेल्प द यूथ इन बिल्डिंग एंड सीमेंटिंग फेथ इन सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस बिसाइड्स प्रोवाइडिंग एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Three terrorists killed in encounter in India's Jammu in Kashmir. NATO says Taliban must commit to lasting peace in Afghanistan. And Gotabaya refutes to recognize UN deal over probe into Sri Lanka's war crimes. 
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.